Welcome to the Karen Reese Show. I'm Psychic Medium Karen Reese with my co-host Alexa Zepia. Hi. Hello. So we have an interesting topic today, isn't we it? We do. Yeah. All about success because I think that's super, uh, super important that we discuss mm -hmm. because a lot of people, it's not, success is not something that you earn. It's something that you are, if that right. makes sense. So you're not pursuing success, but you become successful. Yes. yes. And it's something that it's like a state that you're in, right? And you can, the actions that you take here mm -hmm. in this life allow you to become closer to success. And I think that people often look in the mindset of, so when I become successful, I'll do X, Y, Z. But it's, no, like, I'm successful. And there's things that they, you might not be where you want to be yet, mm -hmm. but there's so many things that you have achieved, and I think that a lot of times that goes unnoticed. That's a good point. And I think, too, developing habits and reinforcing yeah. the, those habits that make you successful will eventually get you to the goal. Yeah. I think that's a problem with you know people, why they're unhappy a lot of times. They're always chasing success, but that might, uh, might not be what you should be chasing. Mm -hmm. You know, you might be chasing a certain career, and that's really what you shouldn't be chasing. Or you might be chasing money, but doing it in a way that isn't giving you, like, your... Uh, your connection to the that experience mm -hmm. you know if you're chasing money for the sake of chasing money but you have no like emotional investment or you're not doing it for the right reasons it's a whole different ball game yeah exactly and if, and if you don't chase it for the right reasons and you have ulterior motives you'll eventually realize you won't get as far along your path if you don't go it because it's all about intention right so if you don't yep. go in for the right reasons then you're not going to go as far well, and I think part of being successful is that happiness. Yeah. You know, that's a happiness you get from doing hard work, mm -hmm. you know, putting your sweat equity in and doing the things that you are passionate about mm -hmm. as yeah. opposed to just, you know, everybody wants to be successful or just about everybody. I mean, there's probably a few little, you know, couch potatoes. Yeah, but Maybe you have to earn it too, right? You have to earn it. And that's what yep. people don't understand is you have to work for it. It's not just going to come, you know, knocking on your door. That's a good point. You and have you have to earn it. Exactly. And you can't look outward and you can't look to others uh, to give you that success. Right. You know, right. I mean, how many times do you meet people where their parents owned a business? They, you know, parents right. brought it up from, you know, nothingville to something very expensive or very, you know, well. And, you know, the kids are, you know, they just get this, you know, silver spoon and they have no idea, mm -hmm. you know, and then their life takes a big change and suddenly, you know, that success, you know, for whatever reason is gone. So what do you do then? If you so have that. It's all you paddling to like survive. Yes, you know, <laughs> it's a good analogy. <laughs> That's a whole nother, you know. But I mean, at least this way, if you if you are successful, right. you know, with the highs and the lows, you'll always have that. Where if you're pursuing that success or that your mindset of that you're pursuing it, you know, you're not always going to be able to ride the waves as easy, mm -hmm. you know. Because let's face it, you know, when you're on that road or where you want to be or where you want to go, you're going to have bumps. Life is a game, right? You have to be able to deal with the, the bumps and the challenge and having that inner core of what mm -hmm. makes you happy and you feel successful and you have all the right elements, you know. So along your way to becoming where you are, is mm -hmm. what's like one lesson that you've learned of like along your path of becoming su successful of something that you wish you would have knew prior to that? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I, I always... I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Well, you know, that is a good question. You know, I think something, um, getting, uh, believing in yourself and learning from your mistakes. It's not the mistakes that you make, it's what you do with the mistakes. Right. Because sometimes people can buckle down from the mistake and then it just snowballs or you miss another opportunity. You know, you got to realize, okay, um, you just can't sit and wait to make things, you know, wait for something to change. You've got to do the change on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, too many people, you know, they get fear-based. And fear yeah. is the greatest, you know, um, problem anybody can have because that will stop you in your tracks. Mm -hmm. So what I've learned along the way, you know, if it's something I fear, then I know I need to do it. Yes. You know, if it's in line with what I need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't, you know, fear, fear for fear itself. You know, take care of it. You know, hit it on straight. And that exactly. will make you successful. It's like that work in instead of a workout type of thing. You have to work on mm -hmm. yourself first. And then everything else will change from there. Exactly. And I think fear is an interesting, it's a funny little thing because sometimes, you know, people back away from it yeah. when really you should be charging towards it. Yeah. You know, and I've also found from my experience, you know, doing the things that I fear most at the beginning, if given a choice, then everything else just sort of falls into place. And right. sometimes those fears aren't as bad as you think. Exactly. Or sometimes you get something and then you think, um, I do this a lot too, I've learned this. If there's a problem and I can't figure it out, what's my next way of dealing with it? What are my options? Exactly. Always have options, you know, when you're looking at something. Exactly. So if I can't go this way, maybe there's another option to go another way around it. Right. You know, and sometimes you learn, you grow, and sometimes this alternative option that you may not have considered initially 
actually opens up something whole, you know, something new, or gives you something, another frame of reference to work with in the future. Exactly. So there's always different things to learn. Life is just like a little hurdle, yes. you know. Here's to more Don't success. curdle with the hurdles. Exactly. exactly. Stay tuned for more of the Karen Lee Show. Welcome back to the Karen Free Show. We are so excited to have our next guest with us. They are the owners of Parkview Soul Food Restaurant down here in Buffalo. You might have recently seen them on Restaurant Impossible with Robert Irvine, and they did fantastic there. And now we have Shanita and Harita here with us today. So welcome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for okay. inviting us. Oh my God, yes. so, so excited. excited. Very excited. Amazing. Well, you know, let's get started. So how did the two of you, um, what was the impetus behind getting into the restaurant? Because neither one of you have a background. You're one's in banking and what one's in teaching, you know, something like that. So what really uh, uh, gave you that go? Because that's an, incre uh, an insane business. Well, I've always did a lot of cooking, especially at home. I'm from a family of 10 and I always helped my mom cook. And when Harita got married, I cooked for like 300 people. So, and I was the person in the family that always had the gatherings, you know, the Thanksgiving feast, the outside parties um, and the Easter parties and everything. And then with my students, I've always, I've always did a big Thanksgiving feast and I've been doing that for 45 years. Oh Unfortunately, this year I couldn't have the feast due to the fact of COVID, but I still made it a possible that I could give my parents a certificate to go shop at Wegmans. So I've been cooking and we both love cooking. And when I stopped cooking, I passed it down to Harita. And then she started having the family gathering. So that's why we got into, you know, the restaurant business. So we took it from the house and took it to another level, another scale. Well, mine were not by choice, the gatherings. <laughs> Harita. Harita. my cousins had a phone line going a tag team they would come once someone would drive down my street on Sundays to see if my grill was out <laughs> and then everyone would end up at my house every Sunday so unfortunately well it was fun um but the torch was passed to me indirectly but we enjoy <laughs> cooking it's, it's so much fun for us and you have such good home family recipes it sounds like and you, you come from your heart your heart and your soul mm -hmm. You know, uh, we don't cook, so by good. the way. No. Yeah. So <laughs> actually, I'm currently casting for Worst Cooks in America, actually, on Food Network. Oh, there he is. Literally what I'm doing right now. <laughs> so I think it's just funny that we're talking about cooks and neither of us. Always, so and that's why we rely on people like you, because we don't cook. So, <laughs> And you know what makes it so much fun? We really cook the same, but and we don't have recipes. So that's one of our... <laughs> You know, so we don't have recipes, but we know what to put in the food. That's awesome. That's true artistic cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, when you don't, you know, when you don't have to measure, you do pinch of this or pinch of that. We were just talking about that. Yeah. You know, when you can actually just put it together and look by the feel or the, the look or however you do that, you know, we look by the boxes and the cans. Oh, this one's a heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it must be good. It yeah. looks good from the box. Um, so what's the number one dish that people order? when they come to Parkville? The haddock fish and then our fried ribs. We make fried mm -hmm. ribs and the sauce will make you lick your fingers. Let's and go. Those ribs go. Fly out. <laughs> and the ribs fly out the door. We can't keep them um, in stock basically. They, they're really good. And the haddock fish is awesome as well. Yeah, and those are really hard things to make. Mm -hmm. You just have to know what you're doing. Because a lot of people think that they can just run out, make ribs or, you know, fish or whatever. No, so, no. No. There's yeah. a science to it for sure. <laughs> that there I'm is saying. a science. Yeah, definitely. And they love the macaroni and cheese, the greens, the potato salad. That's the number one seller also. When they come, they buy extra size. I need extra size of greens. I need extra potato salad. I want extra macaroni and cheese. And I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the questions that Robert Irvine asked my mom was, well, what can I not change on your menu? She said, well, you can't change my hot, my haddock fish, my fried ribs, my fried chicken, my <laughs> mac and cheese. I can't, she let name the entire menu. I was like, you can't tell this man that. <laughs> Just say that to Rita. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's so funny. Um, 
Interesting. So like, what were you, some of your biggest challenges uh, before you went on um, Restaurant Impossible? And then what are some of your challenges post being on that show? We fought so bad in the kitchen. <laughs> we did, but the biggest, I think the biggest challenge was when getting people to come down to the dead end of a residential neighborhood. So that was a challenge. And then going into a kitchen and not knowing anything about an industrial oven and stove, uh -huh. we practice and we practice until we got it right and perfect because it's so much different from your regular oven or your stove in your kitchen. So we had to do a lot of work with, you know, experimenting, but we finally got it right. <laughs> but it was chaos. Robert Irvine sums it up correctly. It was chaos, just like you saw. <laughs> it was such a great show. It was. It was such a good episode. I loved it. Just got to ask you one quick question, though. Were you surprised from when you filmed and then you saw the version when it came out? Because, you know, they have to edit good things question. down during, uh, you know, because of timelines and what have you. Were you surprised, like, something wasn't shown or that was shown or just how it comes together? It's kind of funny, isn't it? It was amazing to see the whole production. I mean, from the tents that were set up outside and the um, crew. 24 hour security. It was just amazing. It was a control, a control room right outside this building. Um, and to what we thought, what we perceived was going to be the episode was totally not the episode. So that was an amazing, it was a surprise to us. It was a big surprise. Oh, it was awesome. And just to see how the pieces were put together. And I'm like, oh my goodness, they left this out, but they put this in. And oh my goodness, they had us doing this, but they showed that, you know? So it was just, and then to just see a production being put together was just mind blowing to me. Just it's to insane. see all the parts and the pieces and, you know, stand here and move, you know, um, I need you to just go over to a uh, certain area. And I said, oh my goodness. And then when I saw the production itself in the back where they had the panels, it just blew my mind. I just never seen so much equipment, you know, for filming in my life. But it was because it was all over. It was a first time experience for both of us. And it was done within 24 hours. They did the remodel within 24 hours. Wow. And we were actually on site, but did not see anything. And our staff members helped with the remodel. And we told them, we don't want to know anything. We don't want everyone was sworn to secrecy. So when we opened our eyes, it was truly a surprise. I, I knew that we walked through the doors here. And I'm like, this cannot be the same building. This was the old Sharf Schiller Park restaurant. I remember that. Yeah, they mentioned it. 50 years. What a difference. They did a beautiful job though. I was watching- In 24 hours? Yeah. It was 24 hours. And before that, my mom and I, we put down the toilets, we put down the floors, we did drywall, electrical plumbing. We did the work ourselves. Wow. At the outside. <laughs> we would go to work every day. We would go to work every day at our full-time daytime jobs, come here, stay here till 2 a.m., go home and sleep for a few hours and get oh, back up the next day. True. For about two yeah. years. Yeah. Um, we bought the building in 2017 17. and we didn't open until 2019. So we did a little bit every week. True and one day we were sure. ready to open. And my mother said, we can't open with the building looking like that on the outside. And I said, well, what are you going to do? She said, I'm going to go paint. She <laughs> went to Home Depot and purchased paint. And I came home and she was out there with her hat on painting, sitting down. Actually, it was on a Sunday. It was a Sunday. I'm sorry. It was a Sunday when I left church and I said, you know, she said, what are you getting ready to do? I said, I'm going to Home Depot as I change my clothes. And then I'm going to go get my matters and my paintbrushes and everything that I need. And I'm going to go outside and paint this building. We can't open with the building looking like this on the outside. So I went and got my rollers, put me an extension on there. And I got busy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my That's God. so cool. Well, the building looks amazing. Another quick question. I don't mean to jump in, but no. I just have to ask. Did you feel really weird looking at yourself on camera? Because I do. We hate we it. Yeah, we hate weirdest. it. We hate our voices. We hate yep. watching ourselves back. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> it, was really, it was a lot of fun. I was like, ooh, okay. That's so <laughs> funny. That hilarious. It was exciting at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. So on Restaurant Impossible, you said your two goals, because, you know, Robert asked you, were to open up for brunch and also to expand your hours. So my question for you is, have you actually done that since the show? And if so, what was that journey like trying to navigate new ways to do business and stuff like that? Well, I recently resigned, retired from my job um, in banking after 27 years. You're so um, with that being said, June 15th, we're going to have new hours. 
I'm getting all of our affairs in place and hiring staff right now so that we can open in the daytime and offer breakfast, lunch, and brunch. Nice. Well, I love uh, yes. <laughs> that. So amazing. A buffalo story. <laughs> That's so incredible. So where can our audiences find more about you? Where are you guys located? Can you give your address, your phone number? Because I'm sure once our audience sees this, they're like, okay, get me in now. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to tell most people, first of all, it's the Old Sharps Schiller Park Restaurant on South Crossman. But where our address is 34 South Crossman Street, Buffalo, New York, 14211. Telephone number is 716-262-0384. Our website is parkviewsoulfood.com. That's spelled P-A-R-K-V-U-E-S-O-U-L-F-O-O-D.com. Amazing. Right, right at the dead end of Crossman. You it does we look like we're in a house, but it's a restaurant. Just drive all the way till you can't drive anymore down Crossman. That's, that's awesome. That's where you are. Well, Karen and I will certainly be coming and hopefully we will see you guys there when we do. But thank you so much, guys, for joining us. We're so excited that you were here with us. This is a really big deal. So thank you guys so much for taking your time out. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Can't wait to meet you in person. Yes. And Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good Bye. day. So today we have a very lucky winner with us, Jen, who wrote in on Instagram. So Jen, welcome to the show. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for this great opportunity. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Alexa. I'm very excited to be here. Of course, we're so excited. Karen, take it away. It's so funny because I got a lot of information coming around you. First of all, I got a father figure coming up around you too. Your dad wants to give you a big heart, a big love. So he's saying, tell my daughter, I love you. Did you do something with pictures recently? Or were you looking at pictures or reframing or hanging pictures or something or something? with photos or something or yes uh, yep we were rehanging some pictures in a um in a mirror that has four spots for he pictures loved that. he watched what you did he said you did an outstanding job the name mike also keeps coming up around you too are you close to a mike or a michael Keep my that. maiden name is michael oh is it? <laughs> that's what your father said michael <laughs> so he's, that's your confirmation your dad's with you he goes mike mike michael <laughs> He's right behind you, by the way, and he's communicating back and forth to me. And he just touched the top of your head with a kiss to Mr. Michaels. <laughs> Jen, <laughs> that's hilarious. He said you're very artistic, by the way, and you are the love of his life. He says, I lived for my children. Your dad was a very hardworking man. He's been your dad in every life, by the way. And I just said to your dad, I said, we look good for about 20,000 years old. He went like this. <laughs> he says, good stock. So your dad's having a good time. He does visit you in your dreams a lot. So you may not remember your dreams. Most people don't. The reason for that is if you remembered your dreams, you wouldn't want to come back to earth to do your work. So God, a lot of times will make it so that you don't remember it. But the way around that is you can say, I will remember seeing you, dad. I will remember seeing you. Your father's commenting on all the great times that the two of you had and as a family. Also, who is the mayor who had an April or May birthday or a passing or anniversary? Last week, last Saturday was my birthday. I just was going to say, was it you? Yeah, because he kept saying May, 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 happy birthday. Actually, he said... We'll have your cake tonight. We'll have a big party. So when you go out of body tonight, you'll have a chance to have your celebration with your father and your grandparents and a bunch of other people too. And um, the other thing too is, do you ever hear footsteps at night or doors opening? Yeah. I hear footsteps. Yeah. Cause it's your dad's footsteps. And sometimes he tries to open the door. He says, I always try to, you know, just check in on you. So that's your father visiting you. Just don't tell your doctor you hear voices <laughs> in your head or you know about dead people. <laughs> Um, also, the name Kathy comes up around you, too. So if you're not close to a Kathy, do you know who Kathy is that dad's talking about? Yes, it's my birth mother. Oh, OK. She's on the other side, I take it. I don't know. I don't I don't know anything. I, I, we connected 20, 25 years ago, but she didn't want anything to do with me. Um, no, your father wanted me to tell you. He said she deeply wanted to, to have the connection, but because it was so painful, she couldn't reconcile her a decision that she couldn't give you the life you needed. So for her, it's almost like she deliberately had to block that pain because it was so painful. It sounds kind of convoluted and strange, but I've seen this before. Um, so your mother has always loved you and wanted to make that connection. And from your father, he said she just couldn't reconcile how she 
gave you up and needed you. So she had to put that wall up and that was the only way to do that. But here's something you probably don't realize before you incarnated, Jen, you had picked Kathy as your student, ironic as it is. So you're more of a spiritually evolved person. You came in to teach her how to be more open and loving and you know so on and so forth. By the way, she did not want to give you up. She was kind of forced into it from her parents um, because of the times. Her parents, she said her parents didn't know I was born. They kept it a secret. Nope, they knew about it. So despite what she said, yeah. So she was sort of cornered into that, but she knew she couldn't take, or maybe that's why she didn't want her parents to know something about her parents. That was a big stumbling block. Uh, that's what your father corrected me on that. But um, she really didn't want to give you up, but she couldn't give you the love, uh, not the love, she couldn't give you what you needed. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was just those circumstances. So just know that you came in to be her teacher. So you're more of evolved spiritually, but from day one, she always regretted it. And that's why you had that. I can't deal with you because it was too much of an emotional hurt to her. So by the way, your father says you're a really good dancer. Do you like dancing? Because I saw you dancing. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a little soft. I have good rhythm. That's what he just said. He goes, and she gets it from me too. So I did see you doing like some salsa dancing, some fun dancing in the future. So when you're dancing, just think of your dad. Who was George, by the way? Was that a friend of your dad's? George was my dad's brother and he oh. recently passed. Uncle George is with your brother. That's why. Because he says, George, and your uncle's there. And he said to tell you, he goes, oh, my beautiful niece, look at you. He goes, you know, I keep your father out of trouble. <laughs> so <laughs> My dad was a very emotionally disturbed, violent, troubled person. It kind of makes sense because when you cross over, you get your life review. But it makes sense, too, because you came in to be you're more evolved than your parents and your biological parents. So in this lifetime, you took that role on. But that's why you came in to, you know, give them, you know, um, a learning experience. Because when people act out on others, they're really acting out on themselves. And themselves. I think that, yeah. But your father keeps telling me, you know, and he says he regrets the fact that he didn't give you the kind of love or, you know, was abusive in that fact. But that explains why he was so pushy today. You know, when I was trying to get ready, he was very pushy. He kept saying, Michael, Michael, Michael. So he apologizes. Um, but once again, you came in to be his teacher. Did you have a grandmother with an Anne connection or a middle name? Where's the Anne? Somebody's got an Anne. It's with a grandmother. My, or my middle name's Anne. Oh, where's the middle name? Grandma's calling you. Oh, Jen Anne. Gotcha. She kept saying middle name Anne. Oh. Yeah. So your grandmother on your mom's side is talking too. So and she said, to oh. she says, I just my granddaughter, my Jen, Jen Ann, she kept saying something, Ann, I couldn't hear. I love you. And your poppy said the same, your mom's parents, they're drawing hearts. So, you know, can you see Jen's aura today? I just nope. got to share this. She says that to me every time. winner we have. She's, don't you see their aura? I'm like, I'm not like you. No, she looks normal. I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for, but no, I cannot see her aura. I, your aura is hey, oh, an aura. Oh, an aura. <laughs> Oh, an aura. I see these sparkly little stars all around you. You have an amazing, a lot of gold and white and white, your crown chakra. That's your direct connection to God and to the spirit world. And you have these little star, uh, gold stars all around you. Really, really pretty. I wish I could share that, but that just tells me. me too. <laughs> um, Barbara wanted me to tell you, she said, I love you more like a daughter than a daughter-in-law. And she said, I just want you to know that because of all the good things that you did, and she said to tell you, uh, make sure you give your son a hug and a kiss from grandma. And she said, you got a great life ahead of you. And she said, there were many times that you would say things to me that really um, touched me deeply, though she didn't always make it a point of letting you know just how deep. But she said, you're an incredible person, Jen. And she said, I just want you to know I'm always there for you. Um, who's the Ron or Rob connection? Is that with number one or number two? And who's the Jim or James connection with your husband, like a Jim, Tim or something? James, Jim, Tim. Is that a friend of your current husband's? James, Jim, and something like that. Keep that around your current. And then a Ron okay. or a Rob, which could be a Bob too, because I keep hearing those two names. Bob, Bob and Marianne were my first husband, Tom, and I, they were our best friends. Yeah, that's what then they had a falling out. Yeah, because Barb said something about your ex with um, this Rob or whatever. Um, so at some point, it looks like those two need to mend their fences before, you know, whatever changes happen. Yes, that'd be Bob. Yeah, because that's why I said your first husband, Bob, because your mother-in-law was talking about that. He should work on that. So if you want to talk to your ex, tell him that's what Barb said. Um, but as far as your mother-in-law, uh, yeah, your husband's right on the money. Making her comfortable, you know. By the way, I don't see any dementia with you when you get older. So oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't see it with me either. <laughs> we just won't edit. That's the problem. You don't <laughs> so edit 
Yeah, they say that you if you think you now, have it, you know. so I don't know what's going to change against <laughs> to be eighty. Uh, um, I feel like there's longevity for my husband and for me. Do you see that longevity yeah. for us? Yeah, I saw you riding bikes too. So if you haven't gotten any bicycles, it looks like you got bikes in the future. Yeah, he's been talking about riding our bikes. Yeah, I think his dad just told me that, or somebody connected to your husband. So um, yeah, so bicycle, bicycle. Yes. Yeah, so tell your husband. Yeah, you're, you're so singing side. tonight. <laughs> Very singing. I love that. Yeah, not really really the singing. I love it. Stick my day. I love the no. (laughs) It's our good energy, right, Karen? Our good energy. You have the great energy, exactly. So, and I think you're going to have a very busy, at least one grandson. I think you're going to end up with two, but one looks very busy. Busy kid. Well, Jen, thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully, that gave you the peace and the healing that you needed. Karen, always thank you so much for doing what you do for for everyone daily. So, thank you. No, and thank you, Jen. And thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you so much. Awesome. Until next time. If you would like to connect with Karen, you may do so by visiting her website at www.karenreese.com, spelled K-A-R-Y-N-R-E-E-C-E.com. You can also visit her on Facebook at Karen Reese Psychic Medium or on Instagram and on Twitter at Karen Reese. You can also call her office phone at 716-580-2520 in order to inquire about booking a reading or any other questions that you might have for Karen. Another successful yeah, show. Yeah, big congratulations. Oh, congratulations to you. <laughs> you know, once again, we did it, you know. We did it, success. Yeah, but I think the whole theme of this is just, you know, going through life and don't feel, you know, don't fear fear. Live your life to the fullest and do what, you know, is right for you. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, thank anyways. you guys so much for watching this episode of The Karen Reeves Show.